What is good, everybody? Hello, 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 hello. I, ooh, I am so fired up by this message, actually. I just showered after a run, which was epic. Part of this run on today had these, they called them, I think it was called Picante Sprints, which means spicy sprints. So you can only imagine how crazy this workout was. So I'm fired up from that. But then very shortly after my run and shower, I had a really cool call. I like to do this a lot. I position myself to be available to mentor and really help people build their spirit led business. That is something that I'm called to. It's something that I'm amped about. And it's something that is so, so needed in the world. So I was on the phone with a gentleman today. And he had some questions about a new program that he's in that I have background in. And he had some questions about my experience. And he also had some questions about publishing. He wanted to pick my brain or just learn about my experience a little bit. So as we are having a call, we did discuss those topics, which are beautiful. Um, I gave him just shared my experience, shared my testimony, shared my process by no means was stating there's a, uh, the right way to do things. I can just tell you what I've done um, and really encourage you to, to lean into God and just be led one day at a time, one step at a time. Often we don't see the whole staircase, right? But as we're in conversation, um, he asked me a question and I, I don't know. Like I just, I wasn't sure how to receive it. It was just so, so interesting. And I never thought twice about it was, which is why it landed funny for me. So the question was, how do you feel putting yourself out there as somebody that believes in God or somebody that is, you know, spirit led? And I was like, who am I not to? <laughs> right? So here's the thing. I just thought to myself, like, really? You know how your brain like has all these like thought bubbles? I feel like that was happening in the moment. I don't know if my face said it. But thank you for the question. I said, candidly, who am I to deprive the world and people that need this content? Who am I to deprive them from receiving it? Who am I to judge God's creation? That could be myself. That could be other people. Who am I to be so selfish and self-centered that I don't put myself out there for what I believe in because I'm afraid of what people might think. I'm not here to serve the people that don't need this work, but I am here for the people that are waking up and they need this work. I know who I was apart from God. I know that there was no amount of effort and hustle and achievement that could fill that void, that God gap that only God can fill. I know that not all success is good success. And unless the Lord builds the house, it will not stand. So at some point in my life, I got to this place where I was like, I'm done with the searching. I'm done with the wandering. I'm done with trying all these things only to feel like I'm coming up short. And I'm ready to go all in with God. I'm ready to be spirit led. I'm ready to have a new operating system, to think differently, to really process and show up completely different to not make it about me anymore and my agenda and my way of doing things and all of that. Right. So it was a really, really interesting question. I'm so thankful and grateful that he asked it because I think it's such an important message. And he was asking too for, for feedback and things to think about or things to be aware of, or just encouragement for his journey. And I said, I think one of the best things that you can do is, for his business specifically, he has a nonprofit. He wasn't sure if the work he's doing now should be for profit. What he really wants to do is teach and guide and help young men really step into their position as, as kings and, and providers and really steward that well. And so my encouragement was to be super clear and hone in on the niche, right? Like he probably knew who he was at an age when he needed this information. Hone in on that age bracket and go in on men, young men specifically, and help them and make it for profit, right? Because the work, this is what I was saying. I was like, 
I know for me, and I had to get to this shift, but when you know who you are and you know who's, who's you are and the work that you've done, the anointing that you carry and the value of, of what God has put in your hands, you have to say, I know who I am. I know my worth. I know what I carry. I know what God put in my heart. I know I didn't put that desire there (laughs) by myself. That didn't come from me, right? I know I'm not here to play small. I know I'm not here to misrepresent who my God is. I know that I am of high value to the world and my work is of high value and I deserve to be highly compensated for it right? No more of this, like, I'll just play small and see how it goes. Or I'll just have this nonprofit. We'll see how I can redistribute some funds to people in need. Like, no, like that is so small, so small. God wants to do so much more than you dare ask, think, or imagine, but you've got to get on board with God. So one of the things that I shared, this was my second book actually, was when I first became certified as a coach. And this was like, 12, 13 years ago, um, I was amped and I was all about it. But what I didn't know at the time was there's this well-known coaching model. It's a circle and you were at the center and then there's all these different life areas. It's called the wheel of life. And you essentially rate all these areas on a scale of one to 10, 10 being I'm amped about this area of my life and one being like, not so much at all. And the craziest thing is is this is a flawed premise. It's basically a mega setup for failure because you are deciding if you're happy or not and you are building your life according to your best attempts at doing so, right? Where is God in that? Interesting, right? So for me, I know the difference of not walking with God and walking with God. There's no comparison. So who am I not to help people experience that for themselves, right? To to remind people that they can have a relationship with God, that they can hear the voice of God, that they can be led by God, they can be encouraged by God, that they have this constant flow of God in them all the time if they choose to access it. Who am I not to help people with that? Who am I not to share life lessons and, and cut the learning curve in half for people. Who am I not to do that? That's what I would ask. So it was really interesting to have that talk on today. I want to see if I missed any other messages. Sometimes I make notes. Um, dun, dun, dun. Kind of main points that I, I wrote down after this was be led, be willing to be aligned and lead from that alignment. Who are you to deprive others of whatever that next thing is that you're called to do? Why would you only just see how it goes when you know that you're called to it? Who are you to judge or play small with God's creation? Right? Like you probably have seen that movie before when you judged yourself, when you played small with yourself, or when you underestimated others, it's not fun, right? So who are you to do that? And how can you train yourself to be fueled from within? Like you have all of this gold and all this potential on the inside. How can you steward that well? Like that could be, that's, to me, that is a constant motivator and it is something that prevents me from being bored every day of my life. Like I wake up on fire because I know that I didn't put breath in my body, that a new day is a gift, right? That there's new mercy for me, that there's something that I'm here for (laughs) and I'm going to be available in those opportunities each day that I get to experience life and bring life to people. That's not something to take lightly. And now is the perfect time to step into that. Like we've had maybe seasons where we've played small or we've, you know, operated from what I call an orphan spirit, right? Where that's living apart from God, more victim, lack, poverty, inadequacy was the word that I gave him. That's really what he's solving. It's a problem that he solves. And inadequacy, if you're a word nerd like myself, I often do word studies. If you look up synonyms for it, this is basically what the orphan spirit is. Insufficiency, deficiency, scarcity, poverty, shortage, want, lack, undersupply, incompetence, ineffectiveness, inefficiency, 
uselessness, hopelessness, impotence, powerlessness, inferiority, shortcoming, defect, fault, weakness, failing, limitation, imperfection. And they also have Achilles heel on here, which I find is interesting. Why would I ever be okay letting people stay in that space? Of course, if they choose it, I can't force or fix people. And that's not my agenda. But if people are ready and willing to not stay here, if they are asking for hope, if they are craving to be empowered or encouraged or built up or to be somebody that can use all of their mess and turn that into a powerful message, who am I not to help them? Right. And they get to, if they choose, become a daughter or son of God, right? To go from orphan spirit to daughter or son of God, to be adopted into the kingdom, which is basically getting an entirely new operating system. If you choose it, if you choose it, but sometimes you don't know to choose it and you don't know what's available to you, right? I lived a majority of my life not knowing what was available to me and I can't sit on that and allow people to not know. So I am here to encourage you on today that if there is a message burning in your spirit, there is a desire in your heart. And if you've been sitting on it and playing small or dabbling, this is not the time for that. The time is Isaiah 60 to arise and shine for your light has come. And who are you to decide if you're worthy or not? Who are you to disqualify yourself? Who are you to play small? and limit what God wants to do in and through you. The whole world is waiting for the revealing of the sons of God, right? So my encouragement to you on today is to stop letting your ego call the shots, which I call edging God out. Stop visualizing the future from a place of anxiety and hopelessness and powerless, which is visualizing the future apart from God. Stop stop. Surrender. Surrender is not giving up. It is giving over. So give these things over that you've been trying to do in your own strength and in your own understanding. Our ways are not God's ways, right? Our thoughts are not God's thoughts. And so a gift and a privilege that you have is connecting with God, building relationship with God, being led by God, because I believe that being in alignment with God is the safest place to be. And God has good plans. They're not for evil. They're for good. And he promises to give us a future and a hope, right? And he will do exceedingly abundantly above and beyond all you dare ask, think, or imagine. But are you partnered with that, right? Are you visualizing that? Are you speaking that? Are you inspiring with that? Or are you staying in a place of comfort? Are you playing small? Are you making it about you? Because it's not about you, It's not about you. So when there's a quote, I am forgetting who said it, but you can Google it. It's not mine. (laughs) But it says that if you are busy about helping other people get what they want, you'll get what you want. Just help other people get what what they want, what they need, and you'll get what you want. I say it like this. When you are busy about God's business, and doing what he is leading you to do, what he's called you to do, and following his principles for your life, he will take care of your business. He will take care of your business. All right, guys, that was a riff today. So hopefully there's nuggets in there that helped you. Um, But I do have a spiritual CEO course. I am super proud of this. It's called U2.0. It's a self-mastery course. Woo, Lord, did I need that. (laughs) And it's such a good check-in too. Um, That is over on julianapage.com. I also have coaching packages as well to work through this stuff. It is my passion. It is what I'm here to do. It's what I love doing. I love launching people into their kingdom assignments and helping them sift through this stuff that can sometimes seem complicated. We make it complicated. So if those are of interest to you or somebody you know, go check out julianapage.com. And if 
you haven't subscribed to this channel yet, make sure you subscribe. And if somebody you know needs to hear this, make sure that you copy the link and share with a friend because sharing after all is caring. All right, guys, I hope this message blessed you. And until next time, stay blessed. Bye guys.